USA! 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 For four years we have witnessed turmoil in America. But nothing quite like this. The pro-Trump crowd fought with the police. Trying to break through their lines. Intoxicated by the unlikely prospect of reversing America's election outcome. We watched as the standoff continued for at least an hour. Tear gas canisters were fired from the very stage on which Joe Biden will be inaugurated. But for Capitol Hill police officers, this was a losing battle. This is exactly what was feared, but in no way is this a surprise. It has been fueled by the president's rhetoric, and it's increasingly clear this election has not healed the wounds. It has simply amplified them. We followed the aggrieved and infuriated Trump supporters as they stormed the building. I swear to CNN, and they just said these guys. Through broken windows, and doors they had forced open. And for a few heady moments, they felt they had won a precious victory. of the Congressional Building. What's the purpose of storming Congress itself? Because they work for us. They don't get to steal it from us. They don't get to tell us we didn't see what we saw. We respect the law. We were good people. The government did this to us. We were normal, good, law-abiding citizens, and you guys did this to us. We want our country back. We are protesting for our freedom right now. That's the difference. What's the purpose of storming Congress? How do I know that? They reached and entered the Speaker's office itself. Although Nancy Pelosi and other lawmakers had already been evacuated to safety. Here you go. Here you go, brother. As we filmed, protesters tore down Pelosi's nameplate. And so here we are right now inside the halls of Congress. This is exactly what so many anticipated. And yet the Capitol Hill police are doing their best, but failing to control the situation. We all know that they changed the rules mid-game and they're not being held accountable. And that's a shame. What's your message to the Capitol Hill police and to lawmakers here? This is our country. This is our house. That's it. This is our house. This is our country. This is our country. Inside the chamber itself, there was chaos. Agents hastily blocking the doors with furniture to keep the protesters out. Officers ready to open fire as a last resort. In the galleries, people took shelter. The great constitutional showdown in Congress had to be suspended. Madam Speaker and members of Congress, pursuant to the Constitution and the laws of the United States. A little earlier, the passions and America's political schism were on display as Trump loyalists acted to stop the certification. I rise up for myself and 60 of my colleagues to object to the counting of the electoral ballots from Arizona. But I would urge to both sides perhaps a bit less certitude and a bit more recognition that we are gathered at a time when democracy is in crisis. But the plea to suspend certification of the election was fiercely contested by the leader of the Senate, who broke definitively with Trump. This election were overturned by mere allegations from the losing side. Our democracy would enter a death spiral. We'd never see the whole nation accept an election again. 
A hundred miles away in Delaware, President-elect Joe Biden pleaded for the intervention of the one man who could halt this. I call on President Trump to go on national television now to fulfill his oath and defend the Constitution and demand an end to this siege, to storm the Capitol, to smash windows, to occupy offices, the floor of the United States Senate rummaging through desks, on the Capitol, on the House of Representatives, threatening the safety of duly elected officials. It's not protest, it's insurrection. Indeed, amid the chaos of this afternoon, shots were fired, and one protester badly wounded. The circumstances are not clear, but it is proof of how perilous it remains here tonight. This morning, the president spoke to the crowd in front of the White House, repeating his false claim that the election was stolen. All of us here today do not want to see our election victory stolen by emboldened radical left Democrats, which is what they're doing, and stolen by the fake news media. That's what they've done and what they're doing. We will never give up. We will never concede. It doesn't happen. You don't concede when there's theft involved. The cost of that rhetoric is increasingly clear. As crowds tonight are still swirling around Congress. And America's long journey as a stable democracy appears to be in genuine doubt. <laughs> 